Three months ago, I thought I was over this. I, I was, it turns out, way too confident, arrogant about, in fact. Then I had a fallback, a bad one. I got caught. My marriage was severely strained. I am now clean, but excuse me, nowhere as stupidly confident as before. I realize I am and always will be an addict, but I will be a recovering addict. To all, mm -hmm. overconfidence can do it a lot of harm. We must be mm -hmm. humble when facing our addiction. No place for cockiness when remission comes. Thank you for that statement. We really appreciate it because there's a lot of truth to that because there is, we, we start thinking, oh yeah, we can push the edge. We can go closer to that, that cliff when in actuality that's when we get in trouble. So thank you for the, stating that. Yeah, that's a very good comment. Um, that's, that's a very interesting point. I think, uh, I mean, it seems to me that the reason that was shared was because there was a desire to help other people uh, to understand the uh, importance of, of putting relapse in perspective, number one, and number two, understanding um, that um, you know it is possible to be overconfident about uh, your ability to overcome something. Now, having said that, um, I, I certainly don't want to take away from the the ability that we have to master something. Uh, we do have the ability to master something over the course of our lives. Um, I'm a firm believer in the fact that, that everything that we do is a lifelong process of uh, becoming better and mastering things. Um, whether it's inside of the world of addiction recovery or not, whether it's more broad than that, I believe that, that everything we do uh, is a lifelong process of mastery. Uh, quick analogy, maybe two analogies actually. One is uh, I, I'm also a musician. I play the piano. One of my passions in life is to play music, and um, and so uh, that's something that I think of immediately when I think of mastering something. I think of the idea behind that. Um, I I feel like I'm I'm pretty skilled on the piano at this point in my life since I've been playing since I was a young child, but at the same time, I know that there are others in the world who are better than me. They're more skilled than I am. There are pieces that are musical pieces that are written that I can't play. Uh, that I would have to really, really try hard to be able to master those. And so I see that as a lifelong process to develop the talent. Um, and in a similar way, I think addiction recovery is, is a lifelong process. So that's one point. The second point is the idea behind uh, uh, addressing relapse and being able to move forward from relapse. Um, when I talk to clients about relapse, um, I definitely like to reinforce the idea that um, Relapse brings with it a, a new opportunity. Um, all is not lost with relapse. Um, there's a, another analogy that I frequently refer to with clients, and that is um, the idea of uh, someone climbing a mountain. Um, you know, we use safety ropes when we're climbing, and uh, the reason for that is that if we fall, uh, the rope will catch us so that we don't fall. Uh, dangerously far and potentially injure ourselves or, or worse. And um, the same is true in terms of addiction recovery. Uh, we put safety measures in place. We put uh, strategies in place and, and steps toward recovery to try to help us move forward. And uh, sometimes we'll slip and fall. In fact, I would say that um, it, relapse is generally expected as a part of recovery. Very few times can a client, uh, a person, an individual um, move forward in the addiction recovery process and never slip. Uh, so that is a very real thing. On the other hand, um, uh, there's a fine line between uh, being confident and overly confident, as was mentioned in that question or that statement. Uh, I would agree that it is possible to be overconfident, um, but th the reason why that's possible is because it's human nature to become complacent. You know, that is human nature. It's part of who we are to, to say, well, all is well. And so as a result of all being well, I'm going to let my guard down a little bit. and I'm going to be okay. And hey, it's great. You drink and be merry, that kind of a thing. And, and so uh, once we do that, then, you know, the chances there, it increases to uh, possibly have a, a relapse or an issue. So um, keep in mind that... Um, the brain is very powerful, and um, as we talk about the two parts of the brain with addiction recovery, 
we talk about one uh, particular area of the brain. Uh, many of you probably, as you've been learning more about addiction, have learned about the limbic system, the limbic part of the brain. Uh, it houses the instincts and the, the emotions and the memories, and uh, all that stuff is processed in that area of the brain. And uh, it's so incredibly powerful. It's very powerful. Um, you think about the, the uh, urge to survive. That's part of what's generated in that part of the brain, a survival instinct. So if we have a survival instinct that is so naturally powerful, um, it's also going to have a very powerful instinct to turn to something that is rewarding, like uh, acting out in an addiction that has a temporary reward associated with it. So um, being overly confident can happen uh, because we can say to ourselves, hey, we've overcome this this instinct, this, this limbic part of our brain, we've, we've mastered it. And uh, oftentimes that, that can cause the, uh, the limbic system to basically defend itself. And it'll say, hey, I, I'm going to defend myself here. I'm going to look out for me, do what's best for me. And, and so, uh, again, if we let the guard down a little bit, you know, there's, there's a chance for doing that. But anyway, ultimately, uh, there's, there's a strong... Every one of us has the strong ability to uh, master things over our lives, and so I think it's very important to keep that in mind that